So this evening, this presentation is a first of a series on the Ascended Master teachings about healing. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and we'll answer them at the end. So this slide is a picture of Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. And the teachings come from the Ascended Masters through their anointed messengers, Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. So their calling was to deliver spiritual teaching of the heavenly beings for our soul's awakening and a path whereby we can find our way back to God. So the Ascended Masters, who are the Ascended Masters? The Ascended Masters are our elder brothers and sisters on the spiritual path, and they walk the earth, balance their karma, mastered the circumstances of their lives, and ascend back to God. So they're the adventurers of the spirit who pushed beyond the boundaries of orthodox religions. And the Ascended Masters teach us a path of healing and, heal and mastery of energy. You may recognize some of those images. We have in there, we have St. Germain, we have Portia, we have Sant Kumar and Mother Mary, Kathumi, Nara, Buddha, Afra, Jesus and more, Magda. So this is a depiction of how we appear to an angel or an ascended master. Understanding our spiritual anatomy helps us on our healing journey. So we see three figures in this chart. There's an upper, a middle, and a lower figure. So the chakras are part of our spiritual anatomy. And you can see in the lower figure, on um, the man running, you can see the images of the chakras. And these chakras are step-down transformers of light that come from the upper figure in the chart, which is the I am presence. So this is a image of the I am presence. And although it looks like rings, the I am presence is rings of seven rings of color, it's, they're actually representative of spheres of light. And these are the causal body and they contain the records of all of our good works in all of our incarnations sort of like our cosmic bank account in heaven. And each of these colors represents a quality of God consciousness and it relates to a chakra and a ray. So in the center of the causal body is the I am presence, which is our individualized presence of God, God the Father. This is the middle figure of a chart, and it's known as the higher self or the inner teacher. And depending on our traditions that we may have been raised with, it, we could be coming from a Buddhist tradition, a Hindu tradition, a um, Christian tradition, a Sikh tradition. These upper, this upper figure is really the higher self. And the higher self is like our conscience. It's that small voice that coaches us between right and wrong. Of course, we have to choose to listen. The higher self is like a mediator between our God self and us here down on earth. So it's a higher frequency than, than the consciousness of our everyday thinking. It's the it's the part of ourselves that we want to draw our consciousness up to, to be in alignment with that higher self. So this is the lower figure. And we see there the chakra man, we call him the chakra man, and he's in uh, a tube of light. And this tube of light is actually nine feet in diameter. And it's called forth through mantra and visualization, and it's a white light coming from the I am presence. And I will give you an example of the mantra that uh, 
that we use to invoke this tube of light. And then in the center, you see violet fire. And the violet fl flame is actually a one of the seven rays, and one of its qualities is transmutation. You're going to learn more about the violet flame later on in our in our presentation. But the violet flame, sometimes known as a cosmic eraser, helps us to change negative energy into positive energy. So I'm going to say this tube of light. You're welcome to join me if you feel like it. And when we give this uh, mantra, we're using our chakra, our throat chakra, uh, and which is a power center. And we're using visualization, which is the third eye chakra. And we're using our heart because we're endowing it with love. So we're engaging our upper chakras in our mind because we're staying focused. So we're using our upper chakras to draw down that light as we give this mantra and we're also visualizing that violet fire. So it goes like this. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, call forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. So we've learned that the chakras are step down transformers of the light from the I am presence. And it's through these seven energy centers that the spiritual energy of the I am presence is dispersed throughout our bodies and our organs. So the seven major chakras are located in the etheric levels along the spinal column. And it's this life force that energizes um, our, our, the health of our body. Our, actually, we have four bodies. We have a physical body, a mental body, emotional body, and a etheric or memory body. And it's this light that comes down from the I am presence that we're qualifying by how we choose to use God's energy through our chakras. So the word chakra is Sanskrit for wheel. And each of the chakras have a different number of petals. You'll be able to see more clearly as we go uh, to each chakra individually. The more petals the chakra has, the higher its frequency or vibration. And the more energy that flows through a chakra, the faster it spins. So as each chakra spins, it emanates a certain frequency, a unique frequency and a color of the seven rays of God's consciousness. And you can see them in that image of the chakra man. We continually receive spiritual energies from the I am presence, and we can choose to use that energy in loving deeds and a spiritual practice, or we can dissipate that energy in any of our chakras through activities that don't support our spiritual growth. So there are techniques that claim to accelerate the raising of the Kundalini, but unless the base chakra is first balanced and purified, negative patterns can be energized, and therefore some of these practices can be unwise. The masters teach is when we conserve the energy of the lower chakras and they start to be filled with light and purified, they draw up naturally the energy towards the upper chakras. And this is the safest way for us to raise the light of the Kundalini. So our chakras are not perfect as we've misused God's energy, and that energy causes a hardening of the chakras and prevents the chakras from spinning. It also, as you can see in this image, it can, they can be uh, imbalanced and not in alignment. So when energy doesn't flow freely through the chakras, the corresponding organs are not nourished with light. And, that, and the chakras can also become off, um, the, the color can be polluted. So we're going to learn about how we can purify our chakras so that they 
emit the color and the frequency that they are called to do. So the low, the low, the lower vibrating energy, which is seen by clairvoyance rather than the higher etheric chakra, is why sometimes we see in other traditions, for instance, the base of the spike chakra being red. Uh, the Center Masters teach that the true color of the base of the spine chakra is white. Now we're going to look at each of the chakras individually. And we'll start at the base of the spine chakra. You can see it's white and it has four petals. And the health of vitality of this base of the spine chakra affects all the other chakras. And so how we use this energy will determine whether the potential for our other chakras remains dormant or becomes activated. The people who have mastery of the base of the spine chakra demonstrate a striving for excellence and purity. Each chakra is associated with an organ of our body and the base of the spine chakra corresponds with the sexual organs. When we conserve the energy of the base of the spine chakra, as it, as it naturally rises, it activates new levels of awareness in physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. There are techniques that, oh, I, I shared that already, I'm not gonna share it again. So it's, it's, we wanna look at some of the positive expressions and some of the unbalanced expressions. So one of the, uh, the most obvious is purity. Purity, hope, Joy, self-discipline, integration, perfection, wholeness, and nurturing are all positive expressions of the base of the spine chakra. Unbalanced expressions, discouragement, hopelessness, impurity, chaos. And here it's also including the adrenals as part of the body that is nourished by the base of the spine chakra. The next chakra as we go up the spinal altar is the seat of the soul chakra. This chakra is violet and it has six petals. This is a chakra where we connect with our soul. And the more our soul is in touch with her spiritual nature, and the masters teach that our soul is the feminine potential of our being and therefore is referred to in the feminine, the more accurate our soul impressions will be. But if the soul is identified with a human ego, the unreal self, the less enlightened those impressions will be. So just because we get a gut feeling, if the soul chakra is not pure, it doesn't necessarily mean it's accurate. The purification of the soul chakra frees us from patterns of the unreal self, which have developed over lifetimes as a way for the soul to protect herself from pain. So the, the souls develop defense mechanisms and habit patterns that can inversely affect our relationships and habit, excuse me, inhibit the development of connection with a higher self and create blockages in the body's energy systems. So some of the positive expressions of the seat of the soul chakra, freedom, this is a violet, um, the violet ray is focused in the seat of the soul chakra and the qualities of the violet ray are freedom, mercy, forgiveness, justice, transcendence, alchemy, transmutation, diplomacy, intuition, prophecy, and revelation. Unbalanced expressions, lack of forgiveness. That would be lack of forgiveness, lack of justice, and lack of mercy, intolerance, lack of tact, disregard for others, cruelty, parts of the body, organs and systems of elimination and reproduction. So whatever energy we send out comes back to us, to us, whether it's our thoughts, our feelings, or our actions. So if we understand that if, when we're in a challenging situation, it's really an opportunity for us to learn to respond in a balanced, loving way. We then can refrain from patterns of blame or a sense of injustice. 
If we really understand the law of karma, we look at everything that happens as opportunity rather than taking on the consciousness of being a victim. And this awareness makes forgiveness easier. Forgiveness is an essential part of healing our souls. So we're karmically tied to those that we do not forgive. So it doesn't mean that we condone harmful actions, but instead we go, we let go of a sense of injustice and let God take care of the situation. In other words, we're choosing the most appropriate responses rather than reactions. It's our work to forgive and God's work to render judgment and deliver the karma that will help each soul learn her lessons. If we don't let go of resentment, anger, or the desire for revenge, we may reincarnate with the same tests until we learn to forgive. Our next chakra is the solar plexus chakra. And it's located between the heart and the seat of the soul chakra. It's purple and gold and it has 10 petals. It's from this center that we learn to master our emotions and cultivate inner peace and brotherhood. A key to mastering the solar plexus chakra is practicing awareness of our thoughts and feelings and choosing not to react. Not reacting becomes easier as we learn to use the tools of the center masters have given us to transmute energy, which we'll be learning about shortly. We can also practice surrendering the desires which are not supporting our spiritual growth. Mastering desire means surrendering the desires to God and letting God's desiring manifest within us. Each of us has a divine plan and there are certain things we need to accomplish and certain decisions we need to make to be in alignment with that plan. But there are other things that have taken us off the path back to God in many lifetimes and those desires are energetic and they are lodged in the conscious, subconscious or unconscious mind and in the chakras. Some of the positive expressions of the solar plexus chakra is peace, brotherhood, selfless service, right desire, balance, and harmlessness. And some of the unbalanced expressions are anger, agitation, fanaticism, aggression, egoism, overindulgent, fear, anxiety, passivity, parts of the body, digestive system, liver, and the pancreas. The heart chakra, the quality of a 12 petaled heart chakra is love. And the heart chakra inspires us with compassion and generosity to be love in action. The center masters encourage us to study our psychology to help us understand and heal our inner pain that may be causing us to react in unloving ways. As we continue in our weekly presentations, we will be studying our psychology and the healing of our soul. In fact, tomorrow will be a presentation on the Chohans or the Lords of the Seven Rays and the healing of our soul. Forgiveness, as we mentioned, is key to our healing. So again, non-forgiveness creates a hardening of the chakras and the masters have taught us that even heart attacks can be caused from a hardening of the heart chakra because of a lack of forgiveness. Positive expression to the heart chakra, love, compassion, beauty, selflessness, sensitivity, appreciation, comfort, creativity, charity, and generosity. Unbalanced expressions, hatred, dislike, selfishness, self-pity, human sympathy, and negligence. Part of the body, the heart, the thymus, and the circulatory system. This is the, the throat chakra. It's 16 petals, and it is our power center. So we make positive karma in this chakra when we offer support to others and praise God through our devotion and spiritual practice. But we make negative karma with this chakra when we gossip, criticize, condemn, judge, or curse God or man. Each time we speak, we're making a choice to help or to harm. 
positive expressions of the throat chakra, strength, will, faith, protection, courage, and obedience. Unbalanced expressions, control, condemn, condemnation, idle chatter, gossip, human willfulness, impotence, cowardice, and doubt, parts of the body, thyroid, lungs, and respiratory system. We'll be seeing how we use this information to help heal. For instance, if we have a condition uh, of the lungs or we have asthma, um, we might look at the throat chakra and, and work with healing the throat chakra to help us heal our lungs, as well as working directly with the images of the organs of the body. So this is the third eye chakra, which is emerald green and has 96 petals and it's located between the brows. The highest use of this energy center is to hold the best outcome for ourselves and others in all situations. Third eye chakra and the crown chakra connect us with the higher mind and flashes of insight, genius, and originality. So we misuse this chakra when our motives are selfish. The science of the immaculate concept this is an image of Mother Mary, her, the New Age Mother Mary. She's holding the world and she's asking for us to hold the Immaculate Concept for ourselves, for one another, for our nations, and for the world. So she teaches us a science known as Immaculate Concept and it's a practice of using pure vision for self and world transformation. Because our subconscious has recorded both the positive and the negative impressions throughout all of our lives, we may not be aware of how much we've been influenced by others' negative perceptions of us. And these negatives limit our mastery in our pursuits of life. And also, uh, oftentimes, we project the negatives that are within our own aura onto others. So the subconscious plays back the negatives undermining our successes. And that's why positive affirmations help us affirm our subconscious, align our subconscious with the positive potential of who we really are at higher levels. So if in an I am affirmation, we use the throat chakra for constructive change. And we can create I am affirmations tailored to our needs, such as I am forgiveness acting here or I am love in action. Whenever we use the two words I am, we're calling down the light of the I am presence. So we want to make sure that we're using positive words after that. Spoken words command energy and become self-fulfilling prophecy. Positive expressions of the third eye chakra Truth, vision, holding the highest vibration, excuse me, vision of myself and others, healing, wholeness, abundance, constancy, focus, music, and science. Unbalanced expressions, falsehood, lack of vision, criticism, lack of clarity, inconstancy, spiritual impoverishment, part of the body, the pituitary pineal, and portions of the brain. This is an image of the crown chakra. 972 petals, and it's the seventh energy center. It's where we receive and experience wisdom and ultimately enlightenment. And this chakra is golden yellow, and it's the highest vibrating of all the chakras. The full opening of this golden yellow center has been depicted as the halo on the saint and the vibrant corona around the Buddhas. Positive expressions, illumination, wisdom, self-knowledge. Oh, I got that twice. Understanding, humility, cosmic consciousness, open-mindedness, unbalanced expressions, intellectual and spiritual pride, vanity, intellectualism, ego-centeredness, narrow-mindedness, ignorance, part of the body, pineal or pituitary, cerebral cortex and nervous system. Attention is the key. Masters teach that where our attention goes, there goes our energy. And so when our where our energy goes, 
creation follows. So where our energy doesn't go, disintegration follows. So meditation helps us absorb the light and illumination of the higher self, distilling the mind and emotions, and experiencing oneness with universal consciousness. Conversely, the vibrations of pride create a dark energy field around the head rather than the brilliant yellow corona of illumined ones. And this dark energy blocks our contact with the higher mind and the impulses of the divine. And it's not a well-developed human intellect or education that qualifies us to access divine intelligence. It's really about our karmic patterns of using the chakras according to the highest design. So after Gautama Buddha meditated under the bow tree and attained enlightenment, he entered Nirvana for 49 days. Before he could impart to others the wisdom he had gleaned, the temptress Mara tried to convince the Gautama to the return to Nirvana. There was no use sharing your experiences, said Mara. No one will understand. Gautama simply responded, some will understand. And it's the same with these teachings. The masters have prevented a step-by-step -step pathway to our victory over the human consciousness and our oneness with God. Now we're going to talk about the violet ray. The violet ray is the closest to the physical plane. And we've learned about the, the needs of, for healing of our energy field and our chakra. The center masters have given us many tools to accomplish this. This evening, we'll focus on the gift of the violet flame. Just as physical light reflected through a prism manifests as seven colors, Spiritual light manifests as the seven rays of God's consciousness. Each of the colored rays manifests specific qualities as we see. And the qualities of the violet ray, again, are mercy, forgiveness, freedom, and transmutation. The violet ray being the closest to the physical in vibration is, has the greatest ability to affect the physical plane. The violet flame can combine with any molecular structure and wave of light, electron or electricity. In times past, the knowledge of the violet flame was only available to those who had passed difficult initiations in secret societies. These saints and sages of East and West used the violet flame to accelerate their spiritual development. It was not until the 20th century that the violet flame was made available to everyone. This came about because the Ascender Master of St. Germain saw the many challenges we were facing. He went before the spiritual overseers for this planet and he proposed that the knowledge and the use of the violet flame be made available to everyone. For collateral, he offered all the violet flame he had garnered throughout his evolution. So they agreed to St. Germain's plan with the following stipulation. They would release the violet flame in a pilot project to a small group of devotees, and if it was used honorably for the blessing of life, they would allow the knowledge of the violet flame to be released to everyone. Thankfully, the project was a success. This slide shows how negative energy of our karma accumulates in the atoms in our bodies, causing the atoms and the electrons to slow down in their spin. When we invoke the violet flame through mantra and visualization, the interaction between the nucleus of the atom and the light of the violet flame establishes a vibrating back and forth, which transforms the negative energy into light. So you can see from the left image of the cell and the atom that the accumulated dark substance of karma and also toxins, toxins of the physical and the mental and emotional uses of God's light. And then in the center, we see the violet flame being invoked. And on the right, we see the cell that has been purified with violet light. Without dense energy, the electrons begin to move more freely, raising our vibration. 
But on the next slide, we're going to hear a two-minute video clip of Mrs. Prophet teaching an audience about the violet flame. She mentions the Keepers of the Flame lessons, and there are a series of lessons of spiritual teaching published by the Summit Lighthouse. Next slide you're going to see is the violet fire burning through what appear to be rocks or clumps of wood. You have to imagine this at the cellular level of karma lodging in the cells and molecules and atoms of your being, flecks as flecks of dust or soot or crystallized substance that has a negative vibration. That is exactly how karma clogs our beings, our bodies, the earth, the water, the air. And that is why we get burdened and that's why our vibrations go down the definition of vibration, by the way, is the rate of the spin of the electron around the atoms of your being. That's the truth, and that's what you'll read about in the first Keeper of the Flame lesson. So what happens is that the density of our consciousness, because it's God's light, we're misqualifying, it accumulates as fine dust or smog between those wide open spaces of the electrons. So they slow down, they can't pass through as, e as easily. And the rate of that revolution of the electron around the nucleus determines your personal vibration. And the more you have light and the violet flame, the more you accelerate, the more you have energy, there is a new joy in your life because the electrons themselves are enjoying that cosmic spin you're giving them. So that substance that gets heavy between the electrons has been compared to molasses or asphalt hardened or to clumps of substance like on the screen. Next slide, we're going to hear a short violet flame mantra, which is sponsored by the Ascended Master St. Germain. The mantra goes like this. I am a being of violet fire I am the purity God desires. And while giving this mantra, we use our third eye chakra to visualize ourselves in the cleansing, dancing violet flame. The violet flame will start to consume the negative energy patterns of our consciousness that we're ready to let go of. I invite you to give this mantra with a one minute audio recording of Mrs. Prophet leaving the decree. Well, you may wonder why we repeat a mantra Sound and words are energetic. They're energetic chalices of light. So the more the mantra is repeated, the more light is invoked. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. So the next slide is the same mantra with a visualization of the violet flame when an ad within an atom. And the pace is a little bit faster and it ends with the ohm. And see if you're able to feel difference with a faster pace. I am. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity gun desire. I am a being of violet fire.
give, but we need help. The violet flame will help us heal the pain that's preventing us from forgiving. This image depicts winged violet flame spheres of forgiveness being directed from the heart. And we can send those to anyone that we need to forgive. We may also need to forgive ourselves or even God. Kuan Yin, the goddess of mercy, teaches that the majority of us hold resentment against God in subconscious levels of awareness. So this is a mantra of forgiveness, and I invite you to give it with me. I am forgiveness acting here, casting out all doubt and fear, setting men forever free with wings of cosmic victory. I am calling in full power for forgiveness every hour to all life in every place. I fled forth for giving grace. You could just take the first line, I am forgiveness acting here, and you could use that as a mantra and reprogram the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind with forgiveness. This is a Violet Flame Meditation, and a great cosmic being told us that the Violet Flame is the highest gift God has given to this universe. So the Violet Flame is sometimes called the Violet Singing Flame because, it, as we've learned, it causes the very atoms and molecules of our being to sing as they accelerate in their frequency. So in closing the presentation, we're going to give a two-minute violet flame meditation led by Mrs. Prophet. Oh God. 
make darkness into light. Flame of Holy Spirit, enter now my temple. Sacred fire, burn and blaze. Sacred fire, burn and blaze. Consume, consume the cause and form. In every plane of being, let darkness be your light. Let darkness be your light. Let darkness be your light. In the name of the Christ, in the name of the I am that I am, I call it forth. And I accept it on this hour in full. 